always told me, like, you're never making no in life being a damn fool. I made it to New York. Coming all the way out of Shy Town, I want y'all to give it up. Just listen to his name and you know what's coming. Damn fool. Give him a round of applause. Come on, damn fool. Come on. I'm standing here with damn fool. All right, now. <laughs> Now, this is a special part of the show because uh, the executive producers themselves picked you to come back. What you got to say to them? I just want to say thank you. A lot of people around the country feel like you got robbed. What you say to your fans out there? All I want to say is pay attention because I'm bringing the heat this year. Damn fool. Who got jokes? Oh, I got jokes. And you're going to see them. I got new jokes. You're watching the MissKittyTV.net exclusive. We're down here at Groove's Restaurant and Lounge. Sitting with me today is Damn Fool. He's going to be one of the comedians tonight on the show. So we're going to be interviewing him, asking him some questions to kind of let you know what's on his plate. Damn Fool, number one question. How you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Tired, you know what I'm saying? Right. Just got in town today, but I'm feeling good. Okay, about to have Black President in a couple of days. Right, doing? right, right. Yeah. I'm excited about this. Okay. I guess. Okay. Well, why do they call you damn fool? Well, I usually don't tell people before the show because I explain it during the show, but it's just simply because, like, I just look at the world different, and okay. the, the, the things that I see. When I talk about them, people will be like, what? You're a damn fool. Like, <laughs> my take on things is a little different. Right, right. That's okay. And how did you get into comedy? Uh, I started comedy. I realized at a young age that uh, I was just always silly. You know what I'm saying? I like <laughs> acting things out that right. I Right, class clown. Cl yeah, class clown. I was one of those kids that the teacher actually, at the beginning of the class, would be like, Come up here and get it all out before right. we start, because right. I don't want you fucking up my class. Right, right. right. Yeah, I deprive a lot of people of their tell, uh, education. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I figured I'd do something uh, positive with it. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, being though that you've always been that way, what was it like when you actually got on stage for the very first time? Uh, the very first time I got on stage was, was terrible. I did wrong. <laughs> I did wow. real bad. Like, you didn't get booed I, off the stage, did you? No, I, I got uh, argued off the stage. I argued oh, with a guy in the balcony. Yes. Oh uh, man! And I wasn't ready for that. Like you know, I was. I hadn't become the professional that I am now. Right. Do you so remember the hackle? I'm going back and forth with him. I'm ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? Oh I was man! Ready to fight. Come down here, then, punk. You know. What I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous as hell. So right. it's like, but now. Um, you know, that first time was horrible, yeah. I didn't I didn't do that good and but it just made me want to come back. Right. That's really all it did. It made me want to really do it again because I had to prove myself. I had to show them right. that I could do it, you know. Okay. And how long have you been a comic? I would say it's been three and a half years now, almost four. Maybe. Yeah. I started like early 06, I believe. I'm not sure. Okay. But I know it's been about three. Okay, so I gotta ask you, how was it performing with Jamie Foxx? And he wasn't even supposed to be on this show, but he was so good at the local club that we had to bring him here tonight. Please welcome to the stage, Damn Fool! Like, I don't think deaf people should be allowed to talk. <laughs> think about it, let it sink in. What for? That's why we invented sign language, because we knew you was gonna look stupid trying to say a word you ain't never heard before. <laughs> you don't even know what it sounds like, how you gonna pronounce it? I got a cousin that's deaf, and I swear to God I hate this heifer. Not because she deaf, but because I spent two years learning sign language and this bitch don't want to use it. She want to try to talk to me and get mad at me when I can't understand her stupid ass talking about, new act night, you can't understand me. 
I said, bitch, I can't none of you because you ain't knocking right. I'm serious, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I think different. I think homosexuals have too many rights. There you go. If the brothers don't clap, I'm gonna start pointing you out. I'm serious, man. If you look like a man, I should be able to punch you in your face like a man. I shouldn't get charged like I hit a woman because you want to act like a bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you what happened to me, man. I had a little altercation, right? My brother, he's a homophobe. He like a Jamaican. He want to kill everyone he see. Kill the boxy boy, pussy boy. <laughs> Calm down, bro. <laughs> I don't discriminate against nobody. You know, keep your faggotism to yourself. That's all I ask. I know it's not a word, but it fit right there. <laughs> Straight up, man. Man, we got into a fight with these dudes. Make a long story short, we got into a fight and they pressed charges, right? Now I gotta go to court. And I'm thinking to myself, I had a fight with another grown man in the club. They not gonna give me no hard time for that. They probably give me a weekend in the county or something. I can handle a weekend in the county. I got braids now, I think I'm tough. Man, I stepped up in front of the judge and this bitch had a whole nother agenda. This heifer gonna look at me and say, sir, in your case, we looking to give you six to eight years for a felony hate crime. She said, did you hear me? I said, uh-uh. <laughs> she said, six to eight years for a felony hate crime. Now, I want you to look at me, ATL. Nothing about me says thug, criminal, or none of that. Man, I'm five foot seven and I'm light-skinned. I'm average size for an eighth grade. Look, girl, ain't nobody scared of me. What I'm gonna do for eight years in jail? I looked at this half, I'm like, how am I gonna get out of this one? And I thought to myself, I said, well, you know what, fool? You are a comedian. You act on stage every night. You better use it to get out of this one. She said six to eight years. I looked at her and I said, hold on, fish. I think you done made a mistake. This was a domestic. Bitch, I've been knowing Charles for years. We gonna settle this one out of court, bitch. Tie my shirt, bitch, tie my shirt. My name damn fool, last laugh entertainment. So I was blessed to even be there, you know right. what I'm saying? And then for, to go out there and do as well as I did in that environment with, that, with him and the audience and, you know what I'm saying, uh, all of the industry people that was there, it was very beneficial for me. And to have him, you know, tell me personally, like, dude, you did your thing tonight. Right. Like, it's like, okay, because that's somebody that I know it's solidified, you know what I'm saying? Right. I look him as one of those people who's made it to where I'm trying right, to go. Right. So therefore, I'm like, okay, that's good to hear from him, you know what I'm saying? So it was one of the biggest things, and it's, it's opened up a lot of doors. What would you say to some of the uh, up-and-coming comics out there to get to that Jamie Foxx uh, moment to, to actually get a chance to perform with him? What would you, what advice would you give to some of the other coming artists? Um, my best advice would be to just, to stick with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is one of those things where it's not easy. It don't right. happen overnight. Right. It's a long process. It's a lot that goes into it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess the biggest advice I can give is to be professional. You know what I'm saying? Professionalism is the biggest thing. You got to realize that you are a business. You're not just somebody acting silly, you know what I'm saying, and for a living. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's more to it than that. You have to be you have to be very professional, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do, you gotta take care of the business aspect of this game, like, cause the comedy part, if you're a true comedian, it comes easy, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're funny, it's, it's, it's been your whole life. You know what I'm saying? The hard part where people fall off and people don't make it is the business part. When you know what I'm saying? You gotta take care of all these contracts and signing shit and reading shit and making sure you understand what you're reading and right. making sure you put in the effort and the work to, 
to generate work. You know what I'm saying? Right. Everybody don't have an agent. If I had to drive to every freaking city right. and, and across the country, I get in my car and just start driving. You know what right. I'm saying? I show up places like, hey, can I get? Can I do some time? Right. And then that got me to a point where people understood me or people knew I was funny. So now I can call any club in the country right. and get on stage and get paid to do so. You know right. what I'm saying? So That's the thing, I, the best thing I can tell you is to be professional. I have to stress that. That is what kills a lot of people because they think this whole thing is fun and games. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And don't let the game drive you crazy because it will. Okay. All right. You work with Jamie Foxx and P. Diddy. Well, what's up and coming for, for Damn Fool in the next three, five years? Um, well, right now I'm in the process of starting a production company. Oh, okay. I want to produce some films. And, ah, uh, film. Yeah, definitely. And I'm trying to, you know, get into film myself. Okay. Like, Shooting a, or writing? Or? I got a thirst for all of it. You know okay. What I'm like, I, 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 love, I love writing because, you know, I, because I like people. I want my ideas to be out there. You right, know what I'm saying? Because I think I got some funny ideas. So, right. um, I love writing. I, I'm just not getting into acting now. You know what I'm saying? I've been okay. enjoying that. And also, you know, producing, like just putting the whole, putting together the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? That's what I right. want to be like the next Robert Townsend, you know, right, Spike Lee, right. you know, okay. like that. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to doing some big things, you know what I'm saying? But right now, like my, 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 my you know, short term goal right now is I'm working on some film projects and I'm trying to, okay. that should be out next year, then I'm hoping, you know, everything is going to be that'll, you know, push. Start pushing things on up. Yeah. Well, we're gonna kind of wrap it up, but I do want to ask, what would be your most memorable moment in all your years and, and all your experience and working with everybody? What would you say would be the one most memorable moment that you had? I think the most memorable moment for me would have to be uh, the first time my uh, <laughs> my three-year-old son saw me on TV. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what did he do? Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> 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 we were sitting in the living room and uh, Comic View was coming on and you know he was sitting on my lap and the TV, you know the, the dude called my name I, it was Kevin Hart called my name to have me come out right. and you know it, he didn't say my name you know so at first he didn't know who it was so you know Kevin Hart said you know give it up for damn fool and he's looking and then the curtain opened and I came down he was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped up, ran in the back, woke his uncle up like, I did your TV, come in the living room. <laughs> so now he got everybody in the living room, we all watched it. You know what I'm saying? And he was just tripping. He was like, man, I was watching TV, and that man came on, and he said, Kevin, come to the stage. I was like, that is not what he said. That's not what he said. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Wow. But, you know, that was the most memorable moment for me, like him getting, being so excited. Right. right. That was the biggest thing for me. So. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bad Boys of Comedy. Like, I think porno movies are the best movies ever invented. I'm serious. I watch them so much, I be knowing people's names when I see them in public. Like, hey, that's Brian Pumper. <laughs> I'm serious, nigga. I know all the characters, motherfucker. And I don't give a fuck how old you are, where you live at. You could be 99 years old and live on an island by yourself. When you watch your porno movies, you watch them with the volume all the way down on one. Because you don't want nobody to hear you watching that motherfucker. But you don't put it on zero because you need to hear that. Because you're trying to achieve something and you need motivation. Ladies, take care of your feet. I had a good time. I know why they call you damn fool. You got, you got a bright future ahead of you, man. Thank you know you're going to see you out on the road with that. We're still here. We're still here. All right, man. Damn damn fool, I'm out this bitch. Shot out, I got you. Yeah. Y'all keep clapping for that.